Welcome back to another video. If you guys haven't watched the first video where we did tangent ratios, I suggest watching that first. The link of it will be in the description. As for today, we will be learning about sine and cosine ratios. But before I go into solving questions relating them, I'll be going over a review that we did in the previous video. So using this knowledge, you can see that this is triangle A, B, and C. This was angle A. This is angle B, and this is angle C. Opposite of angle C is small c, opposite of B is little b, and opposite of A is little a. And here we have the external values of the triangle. We also learned the tangent ratio, tangent ratio, where I told you guys that it is opposite over adjacent. So for example, let's say A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 8. Let's call this 8 inches and we'll call this 5, in five inches. What is angle A? So we have to solve for this unknown angle, so let's name this theta. So at the moment we have tan theta equals opposite side over adjacent side. So we have 5 over 8. Since we're solving for an angle, we use the inverse function, which is on most calculators the shift button and then the tan button, and you would get something like this. 10 to the power of negative 1. This is the inverse function when solving for angles. So if I were to plug this right into there, I would get 10 inverse equals to 5 over 8. Plugging exactly this into the calculator, I would get approximately, so remember the dot on the equal sign, 32 degrees. Therefore, angle A is 32 degrees. Since we already know angle C is 90 degrees, A and B have to be complementary of each other. So if this was 32 degrees, we would know that this is 90 minus 32. that would give us 68 degrees. Therefore, angle B is 68 degrees. And so we use the tangent ratio to solve for an angle. Likewise, if you watched the previous video, we used the tangent ratio to solve for the length at which a squirrel is looking at an acorn. In this section, we'll be looking on how to apply the sine ratio to solve this problem. Before I get into that, let's look at this acronym that helps you remember the trigonometric ratios. The first three letters, SOH, represent sine is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The next three letters in blue, K C A H, is the cosine cos is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The next two letters, TOA, as we did in the previous question, is the tangent, which equals to the opposite side over the adjacent. For this question, in this section, we'll be using the sine ratio at the moment. What the sine ratio indicates is the theta and its opposite side over its hypotenuse gives you a certain value. So let's plug all of this information in this question into this formula. Sine of theta, which we know is 35 degrees, so sine 35 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, which we want to solve for, 
x over the hypotenuse, which is 7.8. Now we want to solve for x. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 7.8 on both sides. So multiply this side by 7.8 and multiply this side by 7.8. Doing that cancels out the 7.8 on this side and adds the 7.8 right in front of the sign. So this would give us x is equal to 7.8 sine 35. If you'd plug this into the calculator, you would get approximately, and once again, the dot over the equal sign, 4.5 units. I rounded this number up to the nearest tenth. So using the sine ratio, we identified that the x value is 4.5 units. Now for the next section, I'll be talking about applying the cosine ratio with the same problem and the new information we received and the information we were already given. In the last section, we used the same problem over here, but we used the sine ratio to figure out the value of x. Now, in this section, we'll be learning how to use the cosine ratio, how to apply it to this problem, and find out our y value. So just like we did in the sine ratio section, we'll first plug in the information we know. So cos, which is the short form of cosine, theta, which is 35 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side, which is what we're trying to find, and it's unknown, y over the hypotenuse, which is 7.8. If you've made it this far in the video, you probably know that in the sign section, we multiplied both sides by 7.8. And that's what we'll do here again. The 7.8 cancel out, and we're left with y equals 7.8 cos 35 degrees. If you plug exactly this into your calculator, you would get y equals approximately 6.4 units. And that's our answer. y is equal to 6.4 units. As a bonus, let's solve one more problem within this triangle. We know that this is 90 degrees and this is 35. So what is this angle? We can simply subtract 90 from 180 and 35 together from 180 to get this angle. However, let's use a trigonometric ratio to figure it out. So now this is theta and we're gonna use, let's use tangent this time. So tan theta equals to the opposite side over the adjacent. So the opposite we got is 6.4 and the adjacent side is 4.5. If you looked in the review section of this video, I taught you guys the inverse function, where if you press shift and press the tan button, your calculator should show something like this. And if we put this over each other, so tan inverse equals 6.4 over 4.5, you would get the value for theta which is 10, 10 inverse, 6.4 over 4.5, which is approximately 55.
55, approximately 55 degrees. Now notice, we could have simply subtracted 180 minus 90 minus 35 and received 55. But this method over here that I just explained, the tangent of theta to find the angle value, gives you the same exact answer. So now we know two ways to solve for an angle, either through the sum of interior angles. I'm going to write interior interior angles in triangle or we learn the primary trigonometric ratios the PTR which is your so ka toa to find the lens we could also use PTR which is the so toa or we could use the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, which you should be familiar with, but if not, it is a square plus b square equals c square, where c square is the hypotenuse and you solve by square rooting on both sides and you would get the value for any of the a, b, or c variable. To wrap this video, let's look at one application problem. Now, the greatest skill in trigonometry is the ability to read a word problem, configure an image, and use that image to solve some mathematical expressions. So let's read this out loud. The observation deck at Peggy Cove's lighthouse in Nova Scotia is about 20 meters above sea level. The first thing that comes to mind is the sea level. That's the sea. Peggy's Cove lighthouse is over here. Let's draw a cylinder. And this is her observation deck. Let's draw an observation deck. That's our observation deck. We know that this is 20 meters. The next sentence says, from the observation deck, the angle of depression of a boat on the water is six degrees. So let's draw a boat. Remember, I'm not an artist. This is our boat. The angle of depression is the angle of sight at which a person can see. So let's draw a line here and we'll connect this. So pretend you're standing on the observation deck. You look directly down at the boat and the angle of depression forms a six degree. Don't get confused. This angle over here is not the angle of depression. This angle over here is the angle of depression. Angle of depression. If you're over here and you assume this is the angle of depression, you're looking straight down into the water. However, we're looking directly at our eyesight towards the boat. Therefore, this over here is six degrees. Now, what do we know about parallel lines? This line is parallel to the sea level. Let's draw this. And so if you guys remember the Z pattern, the Z, the Z that's making over here, this angle over here is also six degrees. So this angle and this angle are congruent. Now using this information, we know the angle at where the bow is, or the angle of depression, which told us this angle, and we also know the height. And they're asking, how far is the bow from the lighthouse to the nearest meter? So how far is the boat to the lighthouse? So we have to find this value. To make this into a nicer image, I'm just going to draw a smaller triangle on the side And we're going to call this 20 meters. And we're going to call this angle over here 6 degrees. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find a PTR that equals the sum to find the length from here to here. 
The first thing we're going to do is figure out if we're going to be using the tangent ratio, the sine ratio, or the cosine ratio. I know the opposite side, and we need to find the adjacent side. So both of those fall under the tangent ratio. So I'm going to write tangent of theta, which is this angle over here. So tan 6 degrees equals the opposite side, which is 20, over the unknown. So let's name this y. So over y. Now we need to solve for y. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. The y is going to go here, and this is going to go underneath. So we're going to get y equals 20 over tan 6 degrees. If you plug this into your calculator, 20, the fraction button, over tan 6, you would get approximately 190 meters, which is the distance from the lighthouse to the boat. Or in this case, the distance from here, the lighthouse, to the boat, which is over here, is 190 meters. Using each sentence, so sentence one, I drew this. Sentence two, I drew the angle of depression. And the third sentence, how far is the boat, told me what I need to find. Therefore, I made a smaller triangle to make sure that it's smaller and easier to read. And I solved using my previous knowledge.